Factorizing polynomials over C, we're going to do two worked examples here, and you're going to want to watch both because they're a little bit different to each other. All right, so we have a function here. We first need to show that this is a factor, and then we're going to find all the other linear factors after that. Now, we know it's going to be a factor if P z equals 0. So the first thing we need to do is sub that bit in for z. Now, you need to be careful what you're subbing in here. You're subbing in positive 1 minus i, okay? Because that is what our factor is. The minus bit we don't look at. So let's test out p1 minus i. And we do that by subbing 1 minus i in here, here, here. Now, I've subbed those in. It is going to be pretty heavy going here because we're going to have to cube that, square that, and expand a bunch of stuff. Now, I've done a first line here. It's important to note that I've done... 1 minus i times 1 minus i here to get this. We get this i squared, which is going to end up being a negative 1. Um, and then that's going to be multiplied by another 1 minus i. I've expanded this bit here and that we have here. I've still got to multiply 3 by 4. And then I've expanded this to get this. And then we've got our 12 here. All right, let's expand this further. Now, again, I do understand this is getting pretty hectic. But remember, we're aiming for 0 um, if... We don't get zero, then the question must be broken somehow because we know that this is supposed to be a factor. All right, so uh, I'm going to group all my real components and all my imaginary components, and hopefully we get a zero here. All right, I think we're here. Uh, now, these are my real components. That is a real component because it's positive 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. And so I've put all my real components there, and when you add them all up, you'll get zero. I've put all my imaginary components there, and when you add them up, you'll get zero equals zero. Therefore that is a factor because I've tested 1 minus i in my function. Now we need to find all the linear factors. I'm going to get rid of that. So part a is done. We know that that's a factor. Now we get another factor for free, right? Look at our polynomial, real coefficient of 1, 4, negative 10, and positive 12 here. Uh, all of these uh, real coefficients tell us that the conjugate root theorem is in play. We can use it. So if we have an imaginary uh, factor of z minus 1 minus i, we're going to have another one that is the conjugate of that. It's going to be z. Now we still use a minus here. Don't get, don't get weird with your pluses and minuses. The minus here is for saying that z minus this factor z minus this other factor, and the factor is going to be the conjugate of that factor, 1 plus i. Conjugate root theorem, if you have real coefficients, you're going to get two of those. Now we have this really neat thing that we can do, where we can say, okay, we've got something here, we've got something here, we're going to multiply it by something else, and it's going to give us the polynomial that we started with. Now what can we say about the something else? Well, Let's look at what would happen if we expanded it. I need to get a z cubed here. So to get a z cubed, I'd have to do z times z times this z here. Okay, uh, now what can I say about this one here? So I guess the thing that I'm really trying to make clear here is it's not going to be like 2z or 3z or 5z because the leading coefficient is 1, so that's going to be 1 there. If we had a different number there, then that might be different but it's not, so we can say that. Now, what can we say about this? You might be thinking to yourself, oh, maybe it's a complex number. Can't be a complex number, because if it was a complex number, that would mean that we would need another conjugate pair. We would need another factor on top of that, and we're not going to get another factor out of this polynomial of degree 3. So, that means that this must be purely real, because it's not going to have a friend. So, z plus b. Okay, so what can I do from here? I can expand these and then expand the whole thing. And what I'm going to get is something really neat. I'll just show you what I'm up to. We've got this here, and I need to multiply this by this, and this, this. I'm going to get nine terms there. I should be able to whittle that down a little bit, and then I'm going to multiply it by z plus b. So you can see a little bit came out here, and we're left with z squared minus 2z plus 2 times z plus b. Let's finish that bit. Now when I expand that, I get this thing here. And obviously I can group some terms here a little bit. 
So here's where the magic happens. Now that I have it as z cubed plus something z squared plus something z plus 2b, remember that this was initially equal to all of this. And if that's true, it isn't hard to see that this bit, 2b, must be equal to this bit. Because b is a real number and 2 times the real number. All the other ones are going to be z, z, z. All right, so I can say, therefore, 2b equals 12 and b equals 6. And I'm actually finished because I can now say that the linear factors of this thing, the thing that we started with, is that one, that one, and z plus 6. Finished. Now, you can make sure, and it's a good idea to do this at least once, just to see if what you think is true is actually true. b minus 2, 4. This is our z squareds, right? So I can say, therefore, b minus 2 equals 4, and yes, b equals 6. Okay, I don't have to do this bit. I'm just checking to make sure that everything makes sense, the thing that I've done. If I've expanded incorrectly, then this b is not going to match up with this b, or that b. So which means that I can do this one more time, because I can say 2 minus 2b is equal to negative 10. And if you work through that, you're going to find that b equals 6. So my math checks out, I have fully factorized this thing. Let's do another one. This one's going to have something different in it. So here's our second example. Uh, we've got this new polynomial here. And it says, given that z minus i is a factor, find all linear factors. Now, the really weird thing here is the underlying bits, 1 minus i and 1 minus i, here and here, because they're not purely real coefficients. We can't use the conjugate root theorem here. If we could use the conjugate root theorem, we would have another linear factor already. We have z minus i. And the conjugate root theorem would say that with z plus i would be another factor. But we can't say that. So what we're going to have to do is some polynomial division. All right, so here we go. z cubed divided by z is z squared. z squared times z is z cubed. z squared times negative i is um, negative i z squared. Now, when we subtract that from that, z cubed minus z cubed is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1, and minus i minus minus i is 0i. So now I have 1z squared. Not 1 plus z squared, just 1 lot of z squared. In other words, I have z squared. And I can bring down this plus 1 minus i, z. All right, um, z squared divided by z is z. z times z is z squared. And z times negative i is negative i z. This feels like deja vu. z squared minus z squared is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. And negative i minus minus i is 0 i. So what I'm left with is one lot of z. And that 1 becomes pretty meaningless. It's 1 times z. Don't need it. We have our z here. We bring this one down and we get z minus i z divided by z is 1, 1 times that is z, 1 times that is negative i, and no remainder, which does two things. It confirms that z minus i is a factor because we have remainder 0, and it also gives us this thing here. And now that we have that, we can rewrite this as z minus i times all of that. So now that we know that pz uh, can be written as uh, this, we now need to figure out how we can factorize that. And it's pretty straightforward. That's a quadratic, and we know how to factorize quadratics over, over C. We um, complete the square. So first step to completing the square, halving our uh, coefficient here, which is one half, and then squaring it, which is one quarter, and then adding it and subtracting it. Uh, and then I'm going to write that as a perfect square. Now when I do write that as a perfect square, I get z plus a half squared. And then this bit on the end becomes positive three quarters. But you need to be really careful because this whole thing was in brackets, which means this bit is in brackets. Now I can write three quarters as a square. I can write it as three quarters, negative three quarters i squared. And now I have this, the difference of two squares. You've done this before when you were factorizing quadratics. So this difference of two squares can now be factorized 
as the root of that, or just that bit there plus the root of that, that bit there minus the root of that. And that is our final factorized form here. Now, if you made it this far and you're looking at this, you might be thinking to yourself, you lied to me, Speranza, because look here, look here, we have conjugate roots. But you told me we couldn't use the conjugate root theorem because we didn't have real coefficients. Well, no, you can't use the conjugate root theorem because look here, Conjugate root theorem states that you will always have conjugate pairs. This complex uh, root here doesn't have a conjugate pair. Okay, so it's not that conjugate pairs can't appear, they can appear, but they are not guaranteed to appear, and that's a big and important difference, which means that you can't use your conjugate root theorem when you're doing something like this. Conjugate roots might appear, that's great, but you cannot rely upon it. Okay, that is factorising polynomials over C2 worked examples.